Hello disc golf fans and welcome back to round two of the 2022 Savannah Open presented by the upholstery shot by Leo and powered by Prodigy Discs. We're here in Pooler, Georgia, still at Tom Triplett Park, but we have moved to the Red Tees. They're a little bit shorter and uh, definitely a track that you want to get your birdies on. Yes, we will be playing from the Red Tees for this round, so... Uh, as one pro called it, this is Birdie or Die. Yeah, and again, I'm Nathan Queen, joined here by Conrad Norwood. And we are doing the NPO lead car for round two. And here we have Aaron Doyle, a pro from Florida, coming up shooting the hot round of 12 down. Myself, Nathan Queen, just one stroke behind at 11 under par. Ezra Robinson, again, one more stroke behind at 10 under par. And then Jonathan Burns, but goes by JJ. He's a pro out of Virginia. He also shot 10 under par, so very tight to start this red round. And we're now, starting out with hole one from the Reds. It is a part three, playing at 312 feet. 233 feet, actually. Oh, yep. Maybe if I go to the right uh, round. There we go. 233 feet, part three. You have OB along the entire right side. You have a gauntlet of trees that you still have to navigate. It's a little bit uh, shorter of a shot from the shot that we had on this hole in round one. Yeah, pretty similar line. This tee pad's just about 100 feet forward. Uh, but that 100 feet does open it up quite a bit as well. You want to start off with a birdie here. And Aaron giving it a run straight off. Nice ace run. He ends up close to circle's edge behind the basket. Yeah, there was a, looks like there was a stray disc left uh, from the practice That is not in play for us. Oh, right line. Yeah, just a little bit inside. I'm just outside of the circle there. And that stray disc, it wasn't the same disc, but there was also one in round one. Oh, really? On our card. So two rounds in a row, somebody's missing something out there. <laughs> uh, JJ not quite able to hit the line. That's not the way you want to start this round. Uh, but he should be able to scramble for his par from there. And Ezra showing great touch, using the roots to stop his disc. He will drop in his birdie. JJ finding a way to get back to the green to save his par. And you are just outside the circle with a open look here. Oh, great putt. Yeah, that feels good. I've been working on my, my step putt now rather than jump putt over the offseason, trying to take that jump out of there and get the first one of the round. That always feels good. Oh, yeah. So Aaron now with a comeback putt for a birdie of his own. And he is able to connect. He is a newly sponsored EV7 player. So oh. he's got his own EV uh, Penrose putters there. All right. That he is putting with. And we played with him a bit down at New World in Jacksonville. So three birdies and a par there. Uh, that's not a par you want to take, but I'm pretty sure we're going to say that almost every hole here on this red layout. Besides this one, you're okay with the par here. Hole two, 340 feet. Uh, there's still a pretty tight gap to hit, even from this red tee, and you've got to turn it over to the left. Again, I am speaking as a left-handed player. <laughs> it moves from right to left. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, lots of trees in the way with yeah. some guardian trees at the end, too. I say this is one of the few holes that has trees just the entire way. There's no, again, to me, 
there's an ideal line, but as far as there being like a clear fairway, there's trees throughout. Yeah, Aaron was very close to the true fairway there. He needed it just a little bit further to the right. Oh, no, that goes straight. Yeah, and I put too much hyzer on that one, just straightened it out instead of letting it turn over. I got out to the open, though. You are trying to get a little late turn on that. Yeah, and Ezra... Looks like he went inside a little too much. And again, looked like he was going down the fairway, but catches a tree. And JJ, wow, just sneaking in between those last two after flying down the fairway the whole time uh, with his buzz, he's able to get up there and have a birdie look. Oh, stay in bounds at least. Yeah, and that's a unforced error there. That was a for the place that we're at a pretty open gap to hit to yeah. get up to the green. And again, this is one of the holes that you definitely want to walk away with a par. So one of those unforced errors just kind of adds salt to the wound. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear me calling it short out of the hand. Looked good in the air, but came up just a bit short. Aaron trying to put force one there to make sure that he can save his bogey. And to even it back out, catch back up with the other three. Ooh. JJ <laughs> just pops in his birdie. Puts a little suspense on it, but uh, it stays in. And uh, one through two, that's that's how you want to start out here. Yeah. If you can get the birdie on one and two, then that's just a bonus. But after that, it's birdie town. Yep. Birdie fest. And you and Ez tap in for your pars. Moving on to hole three, playing it from the ridge, you'll be playing it from 157 feet. It is a par three. Um, I don't know what the line looks like from the short. Yeah, again, it's just another... Various lines. and Yeah, there's various lines. There is a more open line on the right side where it's just kind of a, a righty jump putt. Or, you know, I say righty because it's very slightly right to left. I think he was uh, trying to ring that one up for yeah, us. Trying another ace run there. Yeah, another ace run. It's hard not to ace run at 157 feet. <laughs> this is one of those ones, how do you throw it soft enough? I right there was nice touch. Yeah, I was going for the tree kick ace, but it didn't quite work out. I'll take the birdie. Oh. Oh, Ezra. Going for the tree kick ace, too. <laughs> really going for that tree kick ace. Nicks off of it and hits the cage. Right, and so, yet again, yeah. another chain flasher. Yeah. I guess next year we'll have to sponsor this hole from the red since everyone makes ace runs. I like it. So we got our first bird there <clears throat> for the hole. And everybody else, everybody else stayed fairly close there. Mm -hmm. So with that first putt from about 25 feet or so, that should secure this star birdie on hole three. I guess that's another enticing thing about having a, a short hole like that and ace running it, knowing that you, you know, you're not going to catch edge and end up you know, 50 feet past or something. Yeah, at 157 feet, um, you can give it a run without a ton of speed. So you can still, like you were saying, just stop right there. And all smiles on the card. We're having a good time out there. 
all day long. Beautiful weather down here in Pooler, Georgia. Moving us into hole four. 512 feet. You see the bench up here on the left, that is where the red tee is, which we will be throwing from. You've got an OB path down the right side, an OB line over on the left side that's in the center of that tall grass before you get to the water. You can't see this elevated green from the tee, so it looks like it's all just flat. Then you get up there and realize you've got all kinds of space to work with and make your putt harder. <laughs> Not that no one on the card has the distance to try to get their own one, but it's really not worth it at this point in the game to even try that. Yeah, 512 feet pushing it for most for most players. Those elite distance guys can definitely reach it, but with all this OB around, uh, you don't want to push too hard. Is that another wraith that you threw? That is a wraith. I decided that I was going to push hard, <laughs> and uh, I got it up on top of that hill. Yeah. That's probably the best drive I'm going to have on that hole at this point in time. Ezra also getting a nice stand up. Hits the front of that hill and gets just to the top. We'll have a few decisions to make there. It's inside of circle two, but you have all that elevation change and that elevated Made basket. basket. Yeah. And Isaac getting a nice slide. No, that's Aaron. Aaron got him getting a nice slide up there. Good call. I want to say that was a bid. Yeah, I actually, we were joking about it, saying we all had a decision to make. And I said, well, JJ doesn't. He's going <laughs> to lay his up. And uh, he decided to run it. So I, I feel like he may have done that, whether I said something or not. But it says you don't know his game. He do what he want. I definitely am just laying that up. There's a wind coming off of the like water, yeah. tail left to right, and with my putt, that is a very lifting wind. My putter could have gone a long ways away. Ooh, Aaron was definitely running it. Yeah, that was a great bid. He stays up top. He'll have a. Tapping birdie. Oh. And JJ, the decision to run it has come back. It has. I apologize if that's my fault. <laughs> uh, but this being a par four, although it may not feel like it, he will card the par there. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'll say that that was probably the elevated basket. Uh, takes a little credit for his difficulty in that putt. Aaron's just making the putt more difficult for uh, for fun. <laughs> yeah, he stayed up there right on the edge of that wood. A little tricky stance there. He's like you were looking at him. Is he going to fall? Is he going to fall? Is he going to fall? No, okay, he stayed. All right. JJ walks away with the par. You're trying to give him a little bit of encouragement there at the end. Hey, you didn't take a bogey. <laughs> yeah. Even though we all know it still feels like it. Yeah. All right, hole five. Again, from the Reds, it's 271, part three. Similar line as we saw on the first round, but just a little bit closer. So I'm going to assume that you're just going to take a much lower disc, try to execute the same type of shot. You have the OB going all along the entire right side and the tree line on the left. If you're on the edge of the tree line, you may have a, a, a look at a putt, but if you go more than five or 10 feet in, you're definitely just trying to pitch out. Yeah, 271, you're just gonna go, I go putter just so I can throw it a little harder. You can back off on a mid range a little bit as well. And I oh. just catch that last tree. Yeah. <laughs> According to the end of a comment they're talking about as long as it didn't catch something yeah I believe I was going to say that last tree <laughs> Ezra corrects from the first round and gets his inbounds 
Aaron gets a nice stall shot on here. He's going to end up in that water wow. where um, you can either you can either stick your foot in there and get your foot wet, or you can take your casual casual relief back and have a slightly harder putt. JJ just a bit low, but gets a good roll. Yeah, I would uh, say if that was intentional, that was perfect. I play it off the side of the hill and roll around the front of it instead of trying to land by the basket and ending up in the woods. So just outside the circle here. Oh, just low. And there was that right to left wind at the angle I was putting at, and I was telling myself to put it higher, and I did not. JJ oh. has that tailwind now from his angle, so he was definitely expecting that to drop. Played for the wind, and it did not affect. Ends up a little bit high. Oh, he ends up low. I don't know if that's because of his stance. He looked down immediately. Yeah, I don't so. Know if his foot gave way under him. On his downswing, I heard a squish. His uh, foot went a little. He could have. He should have taken that a little further back, I guess, to get yeah. out of the mushiness. Yeah. But I did hear a little squish. Ezra, surprisingly, the lone birdie on this little short guy here. Yeah. Aaron taps in for his par. So we've got a three-way tie for the lead after five of the second round. With just one birdie on hole five. That takes us into 5B, 250 feet. A pretty strange angle through the woods here. We'll be throwing from this tee pad we're over right now. Uh, it's a... <clears throat> you want to throw it right to left and then have it not continue moving left. So get that original angle and then keep it on that angle. Very hard to do. Um, so it's really a righty hyzer stand up to not turn over or a lefty turnover to flat very quickly. <laughs> there is this inside... Oh. Is that the gap that you want to take? That is a gap that I did not notice <laughs> until this round. Yeah. But okay. there is that inside. When you see why I can't see it with oh. throwing with my left hand, it's not really there. Yeah, it's not as. And that looks like a misrelease. However, that is exactly <laughs> where I wanted to throw it. And uh, I love that's... this inside take that I would have thought. Oh man, he just he just pured that just perfectly, and, and then you come in and be like, yeah, it was a little off, but uh, I'm gonna take it. Okay, so that is a gap. That looks like a. I guess if you can hit that initial gap, it's it's a little clearer to the to the fairway. I mean, yeah. to the green. It works for that right-handed backhand, but it is tighter initially. Yeah. And JJ trying to take that same line I did, but mm -hmm. just got a little bit wider. Yeah. And a good second tree, I think, but he's still in a bit of a funny spot. He should be able to get out for par. He's still in par land from there. Yeah, be able to tap that in. That was a little scary the way it went in the basket, but it stayed. Yeah, I'm sure he was trying to knock that last hole out of his head where he missed low, trying to regain confidence on that putting green. He's able to knock it down. And Ezra is also, for already, his fourth birdie in a row. And fifth of the round. A lot of green there. A lot of green. I'm able to tap in my birdie and a par from JJ. So, already you mentioned the last round, all of the colors on the scorecard. So far, we've only got green and one red stroke. So, uh, much easier course to this point. Yeah. Hole six. Y'all will be playing it from the par three, which is only 329 feet out. Yep. Right here. And with this one just being a single shot now, you've got that 330 feet. Pick your most comfortable pinpoint shot if you throw a mid-range and throw 300 feet scary putt 
impossible four. If you throw a fairway and throw 333 feet, you've got an uphill putt, which is less scary, but you will be outside the circle. Yeah. Or you can do that. Yeah, Ezra throws his about 325, gets a skip, and the finish of the disc keeps him from going down that hill, curls around. He'll have a pretty easy birdie putt. That, like that was a firebird in your hand. It man. is a firebird, and I got a hold of it. Oh, yeah. And once you're on the backside, you're on the backside. That should oh. have been a, a little bit higher, and it might have come up where it was supposed to, but yeah. I'm just outside the circle with a better look than being short. Aaron decided Whoa. that since I threw it too far, he just needed to throw it a little further. <laughs> And uh, ends up with a circle two look also. Yeah, that was, that's the, I think that's the only one that I saw on the day that actually went, you know, deep like that. Most of the deepness ended up rolling down the hill to go deep, but he just flew by everything. Yeah, and JJ disking down, throwing that 320-foot buzz. Yeah, from there on this side, you just want to stay up top. You're not even necessarily trying to bang one home. He did tell me he was going to make that one. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, I was trying to give him something because he was way <laughs> off of making it. So I was just trying to make him. That was for you, Aaron. Ooh, stay. Okay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I witnessed a lot of putts from the uh, backside from the downslope that would hit the cage and then roll further away. Yeah, absolutely. A great birdie putt there, for, or a great birdie there from JJ. Putt was pretty easy. And then same here from Ezra. He's going to have an easy putt for his birdie. Yep. So if anyone hasn't caught on yet, um, uh, Ezra takes another birdie. Yeah, for five in a row. So just two birdies there. Two of us fall victim to that steep drop off behind the basket. And that moves us into hole 6A. We played the same pad on this hole all three rounds. And it's just one you gotta get, 252 foot par three. Uh, you've got this straight gap and there's one off to the right that's slightly more open. There's an alleged left gap that no one uh, knows about other than you. Yeah, not many people would look over there. I see it, but I still don't like to take it. So this is uh, one of those, one of the many birdie or die holes for this round. And that's right down the center. Yeah. Ezra for another birdie. <laughs> JJ takes a different line here. Yeah, going up oh, the center. And the late tree, <clears throat> the last guardian tree is the one that kicked him uh, further away. Assuming you're going with the cult again? Yeah, and I thought oh. that one might, I thought that one might have been an ace run, but yeah. it caught that last tree. It had the line, and it was just that last tree. Oh, and Aaron. Gets around the tree, but catches a root. I thought he hit the same tree that I did, but he actually hits a root on the ground. Very rude. Money from downtown. Had a little audience back there. Got the little roar. <laughs> yeah, I get a little run back. I was a little further out, still adding that jump in there. All right. All right. Like I was saying, that's when you feel like you have to get yeah. to and being that far away. Mm. Aaron put the want on it, just not the height. <clears throat> JJ has it framed up for him. Oh, and just a bit left. 
looks pretty good like it could have caught i think the hyzer angle may have had something to do with why that jumped out yeah still a good putt though Both JJ and Aaron will tap out for their pars. Yeah, and that, that whole average is at 2.58, so a couple birdies, couple pars sounds just about right. Hole seven. Uh, I honestly do not know what this pin position is whatsoever, but it says that it's 193 feet par three. It's not here at the blue. Where is yeah, it? so this one's oh, actually off to the to right, right side over okay. here. Um, we're almost, you see off fair to the way. right right here, you yeah. can kind of see that cleared off spot. That's the fairway. It, It's pretty straight and then a very sharp left to right at about 170 feet. The last 20 feet, you just want to go right. Yeah, I see it now. Okay. And uh, and I guess the, the one small thing that's in your mind is not going OB because from that angle... The OB cam come into play. Yeah, if you get too much on it, you can. With that ditch that's behind the basket, it's usually pretty hard to, unless you're throwing something high speed, which you shouldn't need on this one. Right. And you see both of us just kind of collect there. Yeah. Collecting down in that ditch back there. Okay. And just a little bit hot, but good tree play. He's yeah. down where you expect to be on a 190-foot hole. And Aaron with a little more pace. I was yeah. calling for that one to skip in. <laughs> and uh, it caught the bottom of that tree and kept it soft, which probably kept him closer unless it was going to skip in. Yeah. And Ezra for his seventh birdie in a row now. Wow. But the rest of us on, on this hole are going to keep up. We're going to have a <laughs> a star birdie here on hole seven, as we should. Surprisingly, this hole only played a little over a half stroke under par. Really? You would expect this one to be about a 2.2, 2, but yeah. it was a 2.55. I'm just going to have to account that to some people trying to ace it and going OB. I don't know how it would be that high for being such a short and textbook type hole. That brings us into hole eight. Again, we'll have a different tee pad from this one. We're off to the left of where we're at right now across the road. It's going to be a slight right to left shot. Uh, where you're throwing with this road down the right side of you. Once you get to these trees, you want it to move just a little bit to the left. Uh, 219 feet, these guardian trees late are still inside the circle, so they just give you a little tougher putt if you do catch them. So basically just a stock right hand backhand? Yes, sir. Whoa. Okay. That looked a little high, but as it came in, it looked like he was he was he was on the basket. Yeah, he gave that one a pretty good run. I'm going with a star colt here. I actually just saw an inside line. I usually take that same line he just threw, mm -hmm. but I saw this inside line over here, inside of that tree. Decided I would test it out. Oh, okay. Not a bad result. Worked out pretty well. It helps me control the distance to throw that lower line on a shorter hole. Mm -hmm. And JJ got a little wide on this one. Yeah, <clears throat> if he didn't make that, that initial turn, he's still out there a little ways. Aaron, this is a little inside. And yeah. he does catch some of those branches up top. So he's got, it looks like he's got a framed up line in here that if he can hit it. Oh, wow. And that's a great bid. Yeah, that's, 
That's one of those lines I heard him say where I feel like if I hit the line, I'll make it. And he hit the line, and it was just a bit high. Yeah. So great bid. This one comes off right out of JJ's hand. Mm -hmm. Is for another birdie. It yeah, looked, it looked questionable for a second the way he he finished the putt, but then it just went in. Yeah, still hit just fine. Oh, and that one just leaking out right side. Still not a bad putt, but these baskets are one shit wanting you in the center right yeah. now. Yep, yeah. we've seen him miss on both the right and the left sides of these. So. So a couple birdies and a couple pars, and that will finish out our front 10 here for the second round of the Savannah Open. Um, Ezra's on a heater. Yeah, he is. He's got eight birdies in a row. He's nine down through the front 10. That just doesn't even sound possible, but obviously it is. We just witnessed it. Yeah, cool stuff to watch. We've got 10 more holes to go for this back nine. We'll see if he can continue that here on Ace Run Pro. You can follow us on our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Patreon. Nate? What'd you call me? Then. <laughs> <laughs>